We're very glad to have you all here this evening in the Janique Mekay Littlefield Concert Hall at Mills College. And I want to say a word or two about the college before I introduce the program tonight. I know there are many people still gathering to join us this evening, but we are very glad to have you here on this very important inauguration. Mills College has been a part of the higher education experience in California since 1852. We are the second oldest college in the state of California, and we are the first college in California to grant the baccalaureate degree to women, first among all colleges and universities. We are here because a few pioneering people, women and men, thought about the importance of women having knowledge and engagement and voices and being part of the public discourse and engaging in holding up half the sky. That's a proverb that we all really take to heart at Mills because we believe at Mills College that women matter and that women and men together will take education and economic development and health and really the ability to build a strong world without violence and without war as a mandate for why we have an educational community and why we believe in the future of our society. We are in Oakland, California. We are extraordinarily proud of our heritage. This stage, which was constructed in the early 20th century, has been the scene for extraordinary pioneering music and dance and intermedia. It has also hosted John Fitzgerald Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr., Congresswoman Barbara Lee after she cast her historic ballot against the war in Iraq. And she is a Mills graduate of the class of 1973 and came to Mills College Oh, I hear there's some Mills alumni in the audience, class of 1973. And, and very recently, this stage hosted our mayor in Oakland, Jean Kwan, who is the first Asian American woman to be elected mayor of a city in the United States of this size. And we are very pleased to be able to speak about our partnership with Oakland. So tonight, we are talking about a partnership with an extraordinary institution, the International Museum of Women. This is, compared to Mills College, a relatively recent venture. And the founder of this venture, Elizabeth Colton, is with us here tonight. Elizabeth, we applaud you. Based in San Francisco, the International Museum of Women is a truly global organization with an online platform that brings the conversation about women, about social change, about the creative impulse, about art, about the ways in which we see each other in the world to life on that online platform. And Mills is in partnership with the International Museum of Women. We are proud to serve as the host tonight for this groundbreaking dialogue and to work with the International Museum to create global connections. We are a multi-country partnership in this particular endeavor, Young Women Speaking the Economy. And as a woman in the 20th year of my presidency, 62 years young, 
I think about how women of all ages are young women speaking the economy and making the connection around the world for why women have to be the catalyst for economic change and why women through education and through connectedness are changing the world as we see in every part of the world right now. So the partners in Young Women Speaking the Economy are Mills College, the Sudanese Women's Museum, and Afad University for Women in the Sudan, the Women's Museum and Aarhus University in Denmark, the Ayala Museum and Miriam College in the Philippines. Four of us. We have 44 young women in four countries with one global economy and one message about making social change and making the world better through women's participation. And tonight we have the great privilege of having an amazing speaker to follow our panel, Maya Sotoro Ng, who is an amazing writer of children's literature who is thinking about the ways young, young women can change the economy and change the world. Because we all know that our daughters and our sons are going to be the voices that will make this world strong in peace and in connection with one another. So I am very proud to welcome the panel of students who will speak tonight, to welcome Maya, to welcome all of you to this moment at Mills that is yet another beginning. And I am very pleased to introduce to all of you tonight the Executive Director of the International Museum of Women, Claire Winterton, who will speak about the program. Claire, please come out. Thank you, President Holmgren. I want to begin this evening with a quote that expresses very powerfully and very vividly the importance and the impact of the exhibition that we're launching tonight. It's a quote from a young woman called Iman Asim, and she is um, someone you'll meet this evening. She's a very passionate woman from the Sudan, and she talked about her motivation for being part of creating an exhibition that would really articulate young women's hopes, challenges, and aspirations at what is very much a pivotal moment for the world economy. She said, I want to be part of this project because I want to reflect young Sudanese girls' opinions about what is happening in the world and in the economy. It is the first time we Sudanese girls have this chance to do so. Our voices are mute, and no one in the world knows what we are thinking. As women, I think we're often aware that our stories, our voices, our hopes, and our creativity can too often be unexpressed or unrecorded, whether we live in the United States or whether we live in the Sudan. All too often, as women, we're made to feel that our realities are unimportant and somehow separate from the real business of the world economy or world politics. But we know that it's women's stories and women's voices that are crucial to redefining politics and economics, to making them more accountable, more sustainable, and more inclusive. The International Museum of Women exists to give voice to the stories, art, and creativity of women around the world. We capture those stories in our exhibitions and on our website so that women are no longer mute, but instead powerful voices for transformation in their communities and across the world. We're building a truly global museum, a museum that has no building, no borders, and no boundaries. All our exhibitions are available for free on our website, and also at installations, events, and exhibitions throughout the world. We reach nearly three quarters of a million unique visitors every year from more than 200 countries through our website and our global web platform. And crucially, we offer those visitors more than just information, more than just inspiration. 
we offer them the chance to connect with women's movements around the world and to take action to propel women's empowerment and engagement. Young Women Speak the Economy comes from a recognition that women, especially young women, are too often disengaged and disenfranchised from the contemporary conversation about the world economy. We wanted to ask them what are their hopes, what are their dreams, what are their aspirations and what are their challenges as they prepare to enter the global workforce for the first time. We've invested in young women from the Sudan, from the United States, from Denmark and the Philippines as content creators, video makers, artists and visionaries. With the power to change our minds about global stereotypes and about the world economy. They spotlight economic issues that too often are outside of the conversation and the debate and the media coverage that we all consume on a daily basis. They talk to us about job search and the pressures of job search in the down economy. They talk to us about considering marriage and what that feels like right now. They talk to us about the constraints of parental expectations and the feeling that some roles and some jobs and some opportunities simply aren't feminine and aren't suitable. They also talk about the impact that violence and conflict can have on economic opportunity and the impact of the economic crisis on finding the kind of childcare that you need to balance a career and family. So tonight is a celebration of global women's voices, solidarity and creativity and of how that power expands exponentially when we learn from each other across geographic boundaries. You'll hear from four of the 44 incredible young women, and they're incredible. I've spent some time with them today, and they are so dynamic, they're so excited, they're so energized, and I can't wait for you to hear from them. And later in the program, we'll welcome a very special speaker, Dr. Maya Satoro Ng. Your work, your life, and your book speak to the importance of women's voices, empowerment, and connectedness across borders and across geographies. But before I go further, there are some really important people I need to thank tonight. First of all, thank you to President Holmgren and to Mills College. Thank you for your incredible collaboration, your professionalism and your partnership. Thank you for this incredible venue. I can't think of a more fitting place to hold tonight's celebration. Thank you to the staff, the board of directors and the volunteers of the International Museum of Women. It's your passion and your energy that make all of this possible. And thank you to the staff and the students of our partner organisations. You've travelled a very long way to be here with us this evening and we couldn't be more grateful. We have some very important funders who've made this evening and this entire project possible. Firstly, the Museum and Community Collaborations Abroad Programme, which is made possible by the US Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs and administered by the American Association of Museums. Secondly, the MetLife Foundation's Museum and Community Connections Grant. And additional support comes from the Emma Willard School. Please join me in thanking these visionary funders who are lifting up women's voices around the world. Thank you. In a moment, it's going to be my pleasure to introduce the incredible young women who have forged and created tonight's project. Um, but first, I wanted to share a few pieces of housekeeping with you. Um, this evening, we're really pleased that you will have the chance to ask questions of the young women who will be on stage and of Dr. Maya Satoro Ng. Um, if you have a question, um, please um, fill in a question card. There are ushers throughout the room who have those question cards. Um, and you can just raise your hands when you've completed your question and they'll collect it from you. Um, and then we will pass them on later in the programme. 